deep channel to, to, to the bottom floor? Oh, I don't know. It's um, deep. You couldn't make it cross. No, I mean, it's... Um, I don't know. Like the sea level uh, rise about 130 meters. Oh, that's right. No, no, it's, it's, it's well, well beyond that. It's, it's several hundred meters wide, you know, offhand. It's much deeper than 130 meters. Um, it's very deep. It's very, it's, very it's, it's well beyond the depth of which there would have been a land bridge times a lot sooner. Your colleagues seem to be very preoccupied with brain size and skull size. Um, I wonder if you presented them with the skull of a chihuahua and one of a great dame, whether they'd say these are different species of different, different intelligence. Um, yes. Um, well, uh, that, that's interesting, interesting comparison, in fact, because um, with the exception of some uh, breeds of dogs which have been specially bred for high intelligence, um, the uh, dog brains do approximately follow this allometric trend sort of thing. Martin talks about, so that although chihuahuas are minute um, proportion of great dames in body size, the brain size is not proportionally different. Um, and I, I think um, its, it's proportions are very similar to that of those of um, great dame. Yeah, but um, nonetheless there is a pretty much um, uh, dramatic difference, even though it's not proportional to body size. Yes. Uh, one is ignorance of such matters. One is ignorance of such matters. How do you tell from skeleton whether it's adult or not? I wouldn't have any idea. Oh yeah. Um, well, the, there's uh, the eruption of the teeth, which of course finish erupting towards maturity, and the degree of wear on the teeth. But also there's <coughs> the bones of the skull knit together with increasing maturity, and there's one called the base of a suture on the base of the skull, um, so forward of the, um, uh, the articulation of the vertebrae, which fuses within quite a narrow period between about 20 and 25 years of age. <coughs> so that is essentially taken to mark the end of growth. And um, LB1 has a well-fused base of suture. And then in the, in the limb bones, you know, the ends of the limb bones don't fuse until maturity onto the shafts and, and so on, before the pivices. And uh, this is another indicator of age. So you use things like that. Uh, I, just, I just don't see how it can be said with any confidence that the Flores person is descended from the Australopithecines of Africa, given the, given the vast gulf both in terms of time and geographical separation. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. This, the, you can't say with confidence. No. It's the um, it's the preferred hypothesis at the moment because the, um, that's what they're most similar to. And as I uh, as I tried to show, although there are certainly considerable differences, um, they, that's, they, that's what they are like among all, um, all humans. So yes, there's a long, long difference, uh, distance in time, and yes, a long, long distance in space. So if you like, this is by way of being a, um, a prediction, isn't it? That um, if you find sites of the right age in, I don't know, the Middle East, Iran, India, Thailand, something like that, then you're going to find well, something to your advantage as far as, as, far as this is concerned. Um, re remember how vast areas of, of the world are completely unknown as to human fossils. And we've got them quite fairly well represented in Africa and reasonably well represented in Europe, um, but um, Asia is, is a blank except for a few Thanks for the update, Colin. Um, I'm just trying to remember as a lay person some of the earlier um, things that were discussed. And one of them was
was the potential for island dwarfism, I yes. think you call it. And so I was wondering if you could shed light on that in, uh, in terms of the, the current flow of hypothesis. Yes. And uh, I also recall there was some question of uh, artifacts that were discovered at the site yeah. that suggested some degree of sophistication. Yeah. I was wondering how you could reconcile that with the brain size. Okay, two, yeah, two good questions. <clears throat> the artifacts, first of all, of course, artifacts um, are also associated with Homo habilis. And um, the earliest artifacts are now 2.6 million years ago. We don't know who made them. Some people think that this creature, Australopithecus guy, he made them. But uh, inferentially, therefore, the creature of smaller brain size. <clears throat> and um, Adam Brum, studying the, the artifacts here at ANU, says that in fact they're very similar to artifacts previously discovered by Mike Morgan and others um, of open sites in Flores dating to, um, say, just around 800,000 or a little bit less years ago. So there was a continuity of artifacts from that date to now. Island dwarfing is very interesting, and of course, as long as um, uh, Homo floresiensis was conceived as a uh, dwarf ancestor of Homo erectus, island dwarfing was the, um, was the way it was conceived. Um, on small islands, large mammals tend to be, become smaller, they shrink. Um, and there's a variety of hypotheses being put forward as to why this is. It's a way of um, uh, sort of uh, take, monitoring your resources, less resources for each individual, um, uh, uh, that sort of thing. There's all sorts of uh, hypotheses. And incidentally, it works the other way with, um, with small animals. I mean, nothing could be more grotesque an island giant than uh, the uh, Komodo dragon, but also there is a, a very large rodent, one of the endemic rodents of Flores, uh, living there that's something like that meter long. Um, and um, uh, so it was supposed that uh, this would be a way in which you could get from Homo erectus to Homo floresiensis. You, you shrink it on an island. And again, this is, as we've seen, the, um, the, the brain size would not shrink um, commensurately with the body size, which is one reason why Peter Brown and the other describers um, tended to um, prefer uh, a different model eventually when they uh, made their second lots of description. Yes. Just a quick one. Really. Is there a lot of activity in Florida's at the moment? Well, you'd, you'd have to ask Mike, but uh, yes, the um, uh, excavations show signs of reopening. And uh, also the, the cave apparently shows signs of still being productive, in that at least um, there, is further, there are further animal bones, which are certainly there in sites not yet done. Well, there's been a very, very intense debate about this over uh, the last couple of years. Do you feel it's resolved one way or the other? The, Pardon? The bulk of opinion, do you think, um, that this huge debate over the interpretation of the Hobbit um, well, being resolved? I, I think so, yes. Um, I, uh, because the, the deniers are so vociferous, um, until oh, about a, a year ago, um, I thought maybe it was either equally balanced or maybe they had the, um, uh, the preponderance of, uh, of opinion. And then I went to a conference in South Africa called African Genesis, um, and um, there were all the eminent paleoanthropologists, three of them, no, four of them, actually talked about homo floresiensis in their um, uh, presentations, and um, 